here we go with another one of these hurt blessings tv reactions we ain't gonna hold you too long we don't get into this bag fuel shout out to bag fuel so heineken and a space ghost they got a great platform make sure you subscribe look at their content but they're talking about can you really be blackballed in this industry to me I don't think you can. They can block your shit, but I don't think you can. Let's see though. What they got to say. In the basement with academics. It's short -lived. Makes a lot of fucking money. Don't get it twisted. But he's rare. He's a rare. But niggas ain't sitting down with academics. A lot of niggas, because it's not safe. Academics is a unicorn. Yeah, that's it. Yes. That's all it is. And you can't, be, we can't base ourselves on why, academics. Why ain't, not doggy, at all. Why ain't Doggy Diamonds as big as he is? That's because of... I'm going to tell you why. Go ahead. I'm going to tell you why. Real shit. And I fuck with all these people. Though. I fuck with all Before he get into his opinion of it, I'm going to say, I think Doggy Diamonds isn't as big as academics because academics, one, I feel like he never let his own personal feelings or ideals get in the way of him putting up content and him getting money and him growing his brand. I think somebody sometimes like the Doggy Diamonds and guys like that who might have come from a different era have more fixed ideas on what they think things should be. They're going to be like, well, this ain't hip hop. Well, this is hip hop. Well, could you wear this? Little Uzi uh, pink skirts and all this thug type stuff. Young thug type stuff. You're not hip hop per se, maybe. While as an academic, he ain't saying all that. Hold on. It, it, it all depends. It, it's all based on when you came into the game and what crew and how you came into the game. And I've always said to Esso, there's a lot of people that are offended by how you came into the game. You're not necessarily from the J. Cole era. You're not a blog nigga. Doggy Diamonds was a street nigga who's articulate and could speak well and wasn't afraid to ask questions. So why Doggy Diamonds in no, 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 he's in Atlanta. So we'll go down there and do it. All right, okay, I want you to shut up. So now when the internet is exploding, that's why I said I'm neither the internet or street nigga. I've always been in limbo. But a person, all the people that had like low key, you heard that new, not. Like, I ain't even gonna lie, like a Heineken, bro. Like, Heineken started even before, like, an academics or any of them. Because he was really kind of first. He was on This Is 50. And I remember, you know, when I, I was really getting on internet heavy, 50 had the platform, This Is 50, to rival uh, World Star Hip Hop or whatever. And he was, like, the face. Him and, um, like, Jack Thriller. Shout out Dak Thriller with the little lazy eye. He's still out here doing his thing. A5 South and all of them. But he, they were like early on putting content online. There's a couple other ones like, you know, like blogs that kind of like came to promise around that time. And I feel like he should be bigger than he is now. He's getting his, his, his shine more now and probably more revenue from what he's doing now, but Heineken set the trend as far as doing a lot of these kind of like viral moment interviews and different things that people are doing now. Him, guys like Queen Flip, but I just think they did, or Queen Flip was more better at doing this, because Flip, I think Flip owns all his stuff that he's on, but he was just more better at monetizing this thing. I think this is what Esso was learning, or rather, my bad, that's what Heineken is learning now. Esso been known that he, he a genius with the money. All right, on Smash. They can't relate to being in the streets. Doggy yeah, Diamonds was Smash, recording with yeah. Biggie Smalls. These dudes don't got that foundation. There's a disconnect. They're job, like, yeah, right, he's know. over there, but he ain't one of us. Just like how Esso would be like, yo, if we don't move a certain way in the music industry, they're going to say, what's the first thing? Yo, S, they call him by his real name. You're one of us. Why you doing that? Yeah, There's a no, connection. But, but Esso is right, though. Because I've been with the wild niggas who've been in the street. 
I did a whole show with Queens Flip with Doggy Diamonds. Yes. With all these niggas. These niggas show up with hammers, nigga. Yes. They don't, they don't show up for him for us just in case. Queens Flip, because right? They don't That's true, too. It's a different element. Academics in them, he ain't even more like he, what he came from. I think he was like a computer science degree or something. He was going to like an illustrious like college. He's more into like the tech kind of more nerdy nuance thing. He he wasn't out during the field. He wasn't feet on land like so. It ain't no way he and he lacks that type of perspective in his content, and that is his most glaring. His most glaring, um, like vulnerability. You can see guys like him, even like Adam Twenty Two. Adam Twenty Two got some homeless stuff. Chew on that, but these guys, they don't have that aspect that you can, you know, that wheelhouse they can come out of information. I will say, people like a Trap Lord Ross, Trap Lord Ross may not have that, but Trap Lord Ross. And guys like him, there's a couple others, Chicago 88, they fill that up with just content. Content and just detail. Like quality content and detail content. They might not have all the other stuff they got. Excerpts from stuff you ain't even from when you was in grammar school. Like, you feel me? Don't know what's going to happen, the Queens. You can. Make, you don't want that energy. No, I agree with you. Millions of dollars. The same niggas <laughs> you talk about with Doggy Diamonds not being connected with was Queens Flip connected with them niggas, and he's younger than all the niggas. He was connected with the streets, though. That's what I'm saying. But he was still in the media world, and now these other bloggers that are in the offices are looking like, yo, he's really outside. He's really aggressive. They're gonna be like. I don't know about that one. And he's younger than all the niggas. Think about that. Y'all the same age. We're not the same, man. He's older than me. He's older By than what? Me. A couple of years? Whatever. He's still young in scale. That's why when they see an ESO, what's the first thing they say? Where the fuck you came from? Yeah, they see, don't like that. When they ask that. They don't like when you come out of the cut and you know a lot of knowledge. And he, I ain't gonna lie, he's a genius type dude because I watched when he was on he was on um, my expert opinion. The first like maybe appearances of him, he didn't really say too much. He added a little few words to further contextualize something Heineken and somebody would have said. But he didn't really show like the depth of knowledge and the things he knew. To like it was one of them episodes where he just went in with just everything. Was it the one with Core Mega or somebody on there? He just went in. I'm like, damn, this man knows some stuff. Like, let me go research this stuff. And they don't like that when you know go in the room and you know what a quote-unquote boss is supposed to know. You know what they know and exceed maybe what they know. They get super intimidated. That question, I know where that comes from. They're like, is he a blogger nigga? Is he a street nigga? Yeah, but huh, when you walk in the building, like when you walk in Atlantic with these people, he you everything. can feel the wall. Like, we everything, nigga. That's what do you mean you, you can, can feel the wall? You can feel the wall. You could be like... They only going to get to this nigga a certain point because he has to show them something that's going to say, okay, I'll work with him to go past I, I I think one of the things that's grossly underestimated is comfortability. I remember um, Esso and I had went to a Money Man dinner and one of the big label reps walked up to me and Esso and he said, you still making niggas uncomfortable with these interviews? It felt good for what it was in that moment. And Esso pulled me. He said, that ain't good work. It's credit on one level, yeah. but that's going to cost us at least 300000 That stuff don't be good for when you're trying to get that big bag and they want you to play ball. But y'all tell me, is there any type of way you can get black ball? There's a lot more to this. Y'all go check out back through channel go check out the video in its entirety make sure you like and subscribe to them and so heineken and me i'm hurt blessing tv to the next one we out y'all stay safe